Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. Welcome to the Great Bass Boat Search 2020-2021. This is our 11th boat we have reviewed, 2021-22 uh, videos. If you hadn't seen any of those, if this is your first visit, check them out. There's a playlist at the top of the screen there that'll show you all the reviews we've done. This is, if not the most requested boat, it's one of the three most requested boats I've had uh, for me to do a review of, and that is the Skeeter FXR. I, I reviewed a Skeeter FXR 21L, which is the limited version of this boat. comes in a couple different packages. Um, and I've tried in all of my videos to be as unbiased as I possibly could. And I will admit I had bias on my boat. That's the 521C boat. I've been very disappointed as you guys, and if you've been following these videos, as you know, I've been very disappointed in the fit and finish on that boat. I tried not to carry that bias over to the 520L boat, Chris's boat I reviewed. Probably still had a little bit of bias there. But I have some biases on the Skeeter, and I just want to go on record on those. First, I've been a fish out of a Skeeter for a very long time. Uh, my last one was a ZX250. I love the platform. I love the fishability. I never felt like I got in big water that I couldn't get out of. I, I love driving that boat. Uh, I was on the Skeeter state team, I was on the Skeeter national team. And even back as a young man, I remember going down with my brother-in-law, we would go pond fishing and we would go down and peer through the fence at the Skeeter factory at all those boats that are sitting out there wrapped and, and I remember how bad I wanted one of those boats. So I'm a Skeeter fan, I got family in Kilgore still, I would love to run a Skeeter, I would love to support the East Texas area, but... Um, I have another bias, and that is my last experience with my Skeeters. Um, my Skeeter, I had, uh, I kept literally a plastic mason jar with a lid and a rod box, and when screws would fall loose, which happened regularly, I'd put them in there, and I'd go back later and figure out where they went. I had screws back out on the, on the cap all the time. I couldn't keep my rub rail on the boat. In the summer, it would get longer, and I'd have to cut it off and screw it back on, and it just it just made me crazy. And I went from Skeeter to Ranger and was it was such a different fit and finish when I bought my first Ranger many years ago now. But so I have that bias. Now I hope Skeeter has fixed some of those problems. So I'm going to try not to carry that bias forward. Um, but I just want to admit those up front. I want to support Skeeter. I want to like a Skeeter, but I have a lot of bad memories from running a Skeeter. So I hope this isn't my dad's or my old Skeeter, uh, my old Skeeter specifically. But uh, again, I just want to admit those biases up front. So let's go to the video. And by the way, I've been showing you this boat the whole time. This is a really, really pretty boat, uh, no doubt about it. So here we go, guys. Good morning, guys, from uh, the south end of Sam Rayburn. Jesse Floyd has brought me the most requested boat of all of my boat reviews, the Skeeter, and I'm going to get it wrong, FXR. 21 or 21 FXR as I've been calling it. So we're going to swap boats today. He's going to go zipping around at ranger speed and I'm going to take my, the Skeeter out and give it a boat ride. So this is a 21 foot 4 inch boat. It's a really pretty boat. We were talking on camera uh, before we started the camera. I've already said I'll never have another white boat and you said the same thing and then you saw the rendering. Yes. Uh, the picture that I saw said satin gray gel and it was a lot more gray color like a flat gray and that's what I thought I was getting and then just days before it showed up I saw one on the internet and it's like oh wow that's not what I was expecting but once it landed there and I saw it, it, it every time I look at it, it just grows on me more and more now. it's be it's a beautiful boat and what I like about it guys and we'll step back is I love how they've done the uh, the bottom of it black so it, it reduces the profile on the boat it's just really good looking so let's just walk around it real quick. So as we've talked, make sure we're recording. So trailer step, right? Fulton owns the jack business these days. This is brilliant place to step out of the boat. Jack and winch of Fulton, spare up underneath. Now I'm, this is just a personal opinion. I'm real torn about this. These lower profile tires, anybody who knows when you put those on your truck, they ride a little bit rougher. I would assume it does the same thing on a boat, but they're good looking and you don't ride in your trailer, right? So why not put them on there? We're gonna be running a 250 Yamaha. What are we spinning back here? 
25T2. So the T2 of the Yamaha props. He's got an Atlas jack plate on it. Is there a crawl back end ladder on these things? There is, but I took it off. It, it mounts. You can see the picture right there. Oh, yeah. And it mount, they had it mounted on this uh, power pole bracket. And I took it off because it stuck up right here and it just, I don't know, I thought it looked better without it. And I'm still young enough to where I can jump back in the boat pretty easy. If I had some, of us, you, some of you have enough upper body strength to pull yourself back in. Show us the tray system up there. Once you hop up in it. So Jesse sent me some great screenshots that I'll show you guys uh, last night of the lights of the boat. But this is pretty slick. So you see he's got a traditional mess inside his rot box, which he should. That's how we all travel. But they actually set it up where you can have it a lot cleaner than that. Show, you what the, show them what they got, Jesse. Yeah, these are the boxes that I've been using for years in all the other boats that I've had. And I'll be selling this boat after using it for a year. So I took these, which came with it. These two boxes fit in here. And there's some bungee straps to go over and hold them in place. And they're pretty cool if you're staying at a hotel or something. You can just take these out, take all your tackle out with your rods in the hotel, have all your tackle, or you can buy extra one of these and have, you know, summer baits in here, winter baits, shallow baits, or whatever. Oh, you can buy the extra trays. Yeah, you can buy this whole thing. Right That's here. cool, yeah. Yeah, so they just fit in there nice and neat, but I wanted the next owner to have them brand new, so I took them out and just used my old boxes in there. We've already seen, you already see there, they've got uh, net storage up under the deck. That's pretty slick. Yeah, that's the standard neck that it comes with. The bungee strap just pops off. Mm -hmm. And you take it out for the day and put it back when you're done. So he went with the single console. I'm noticing something there. That step is actually padded. So if you got a third guy in the boat or yeah, a girl. it's really comfortable. You yeah. Know, you can kneel down on it, step on it, sit there. I have a six-year-old daughter. That's her seat. And what's her name? Ava. Hey, Ava. <laughs> got the put push button dash. You guys know my feelings on the push button dash. They look great. We'll check those out. He's gone with, is that a 16 or 15? That's the new 15 yeah. Helix. All right, so he's got the massive Helix in the dash. Two up front, good looking seats. Let's measure the boat before we get on the water. It's way easier to do off the water. All right, uh, a lot of the other boats, you'll see the, the butt seat will have two holes to where you can adjust how far and how close you want to be to your foot pedal. Uh, on the 2021 model Skeeters, they just put one hole here and decided to have a seat that goes back and forth. So you That's can move pretty it cool. Closer, yeah. Move it back. That way you can get to where you want to be with just one hole there. That's a cool idea. So 21 four inches. I'm, I'm going to guess it's a 96 or 97 inch beam. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen right now. Jesse's going to shoot the uh, shoot the width at the seat hole right there. So I think that's actually a smidge wider. If I remember, the 521 is 66 and a half. But again, we'll put the grid up. So 68, nice wide front deck. Which, So, guys, well, you know what? I'll tell you all about my experience with a Skeeter later when I got a mic on. Let's shoot the back deck, same spot. Looking right at 81. Oh, that's a big wide back deck too, isn't it? Guys, I've had several of you ask for me to post this grid and leave it up a little bit longer during the video. So uh, just a quick review. So this is the 11th boat we've reviewed. Uh, it's kind of right in the middle from a link standpoint, 21 feet, 4 inches. Uh, same with the beam. It's actually probably on the larger side of the beam. I think we've seen one boat, which is at the Ranger 521 sees a little wider. Now, the weight seems really high to me, uh, 300 pounds-ish heavier than the other boats we've weighed, or we, excuse me, that we've looked at. I'm wondering, and I'll confirm this with hopefully with the Skeeter rep, if that is including the motor, since every boat comes with the same motor. They may be including motor in that way, but I'll clarify that uh, and put that in the grading. If not, it's a super heavy boat. Uh, pretty good, actually big front deck width, uh, really only a couple boats bigger. Likewise, big back deck width as well. So this is a great big boat, and kind of from, from worst to best, uh, our poorest score of all the boats so far was the Bullet. 
uh, which, you know, we talked about why, I mean, it's just not set up as a great fishing boat. Uh, the best uh, testing boats so far have been the Camus and the 921 Pro XP, the Phoenix and the Camus. Uh, but several boats right in that same 79, 80, 81 range, uh, including the last boat we looked at, the Phoenix 21 PHX. So uh, that that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, the Skeeter, uh, well, let's just go on through the rest of the Skeeter review, and we'll see where the Skeeter lands. Okay, and our sump access is the cleanest one you're going to see. Boy, that's slick. So they've done what we talked about in the other boat. So by the way, most manufacturers are adding those trays now, which is really neat. See what secrets he has hidden back here. So they've got three across, but interestingly, which is what we've talked about, they've pulled that battery closer to the center line. Now, so Jesse's running a single console, so this boat's probably weighted pretty well because you've got, you've got, of course, driver, console, single battery over there, triple batteries over here. We've had a lot of discourse about that in the, uh, in the video commentary where guys are saying, well, if you're a single console, that's how you want them weighted. By the way, that is a really, really nice charger, that Minn Kota Precision Charger. That's one of the few chargers that can tell the difference between a gel battery and, a, and an AGM or a, a liquid cell battery. Yeah, all your pumps right there, easy to get to, all your plumbing. You don't yeah. have to pull anything. Right. You got room for an uh, extra prop right here, or you can take one of these batteries if you're riding weird. Take one of those batteries and move it over there. I've heard people do that. Mm -hmm. So you can redistribute your own weight if you want to. Yeah, you got your pumps for your poles over here. I think you're right. I think that's the easiest access we've seen in any boat to your sump. Yep. And with the split lids, you can close one and lay over here and work on stuff. Boy, that's a great idea, person. isn't it? Yeah, just double up the lids. And if you had to, you can unscrew these hinges and take the lids completely off. Mm -hmm. And all these are completely aluminum, none of the lids and none of the flooring is fiberglass. Are there, I didn't notice, are there gaskets around the front lids? No, they're all going to be lit with this yep. with this aluminum and then they press up against the, the foam insulation here on top of the lids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you see they foam the lids up there. And all the lights, these rigid industry lights shine down. You'll see in the pictures that I sent Ken. Is that a... Uh... That's not standard, is it? It's standard in this in this limited. They have the, the select boats, the limiteds, and then the apex, which are just different packages. The selects are more custom, where you can customize your color, customize your options. Uh, the limited and the apex come standard with these, though. So this is a limited, right? And this is the boat you said seven basic colors. Eight. Eight basic colors. And then the apex has five. Okay. All right, but otherwise, same boat, just according to how you want to rig it. Right. Yep. Got it. Good looking seats. Let's take it. Uh, let's take it for a spin, boys. I'm interested to. Yeah, those seats are awesome with those handles. They're really comfortable. Uh huh. I'm interested to see if I can catch fish in it. Oh, okay. All right, guys, he's already ruined me. That 15 inch helix is nice. It's huge, really huge. All right, so jack plates on the right. We need to remember that. Got his gauges set up over there. Got analog gauges over here. You see the trim down there. He's got me full of fuel. push button sounds good it feels really big it feels really big and it's smaller than my boat I'll measure the back deck when we get stopped see if you're a little further back the seats are they kind of sporty looking but they're big comfortable seats I would say for a bigger dude, these might be super comfortable seats. I got no butt anymore, so all I need is padding. Right, 
Guys, what you're going to see here is, is this is purposeful. I'm running this boat slow, and this is one of the knocks on the boat. The boat wants to porpoise at low speed, which, as you guys know, is a big deal in rough water. So um, I'm just playing with it right here. I've got it trimmed all the way down. I'm going to address this much deeper later in this video series on this boat. Now, you're going to see right here, I put my foot in it. When I put my foot in it, it flattens out and it runs nice and stable. But just know I knew that going in. I tested it right off the bat, and I'm going to come back to it and spend a bunch more time on it here in a minute. All right, guys, you're going to see right here, I go ahead and lean on it. Uh, and you're going to see on the speedometer on the Humminbird here in a second, I touch 72 miles an hour. Pretty fast for a big boat. Just, you know, it's over 21-foot boat. Not the fastest boat we've tested. Certainly not the slowest boat we've tested. Um, it, he does run it heavy. I'll tell you, he had the front end of the boat very, very weighted, probably maybe even more than I carry in the front end of the boat. So, and, and look, load makes a big difference, right? You could reload this boat and, and pick up another half mile an hour, mile an hour speed. But in talking to Jesse and actually in talking to two other buddies who run this same boat, tournament loaded, two full-size guys, live wheels full, you know, half to three-quarter tank of gas. This boat's a high 60s boat. It's not a 70-mile-an-hour boat. So uh, very respectable for a boat over 21 feet long. Okay, guys, so uh, by the way, this is a loaded hole shot, but I really don't get in it. It does have a good loaded hole shot. But So this is a, a synopsis of about 20 or 30 minutes of making low-speed passes in this boat. So I have heard, and by the way, I've not shared this with you guys. I'm getting a lot of my ride information from four different guys who co-angle a lot. So they, they are riding in Toyota Series and FBFL tournaments where they're the co-angler. And those guys get to ride in a bunch of different boats and see a lot of different skill levels of driving boats. And some of the feedback I had gotten about this boat and the ride was from those guys. And some was from a guy in East Texas who came out of a Ranger, bought a Skeeter, owned it for about a month, and sold it because... He didn't, he said it was the worst riding boat he'd ever been in a rough water. Now, having said that, I'm friends with two guys who work at very large dealers in the U.S. that sell both Phoenix and Skeeters, and they could run either, and both of them run Skeeters, and specifically FXR Skeeters, which says a lot to me. So that tells me that this is not the worst riding boat in the world, but what I did experience was when that jack plate is all the way down at one, it wants to do this. But, of course, this is all about leverage, right? So as I tinkered with this thing, I could keep it on the pad with the jack plate down, you know, one, two, or three in the high 20s. But I really wanted it on the pad in the low 20s. And what I discovered was I could fool with it, and between four and eight on the jack plate, I could get it down mid-20s and have some control of the nose of that boat. And I believe if I spent enough time in this boat, I could control this boat in rough water. But that sort of leads me back to my buddy who come out of a Ranger and, and bought a Skeeter and, and only kept it for about a month. I would be willing to bet you that he was out there on a rough day with the jack plate all the way in the dirt, which is how you drive a Ranger. And he was having a hard time keeping nose control because the boat was parpsing on him. This boat in my opinion, is drivable in rough water. Look, I know two guys who both work at different dealerships. They're two of the largest marine dealerships in the country, and both those dealerships sell Skeeters and both the, and, the, and sell Phoenixes. And both those guys who could drive whatever they want drive this boat, the FXR Skeeter. That says something to me. Maybe there's some super deal for them to drive it, but I don't think so. One of them's a tournament fisherman. I think they drive it because they like to ride in it. This is a boat that you're going to have to learn based upon the wind conditions, the waves, how you got the boat loaded that day, where your sweet spot is on that jack plate. And I wouldn't want to have to learn that the day or the second or third day I own this boat. You're going to have to own this boat for a little while and drive it to learn that sweet spot. So I am going to ding this boat in performance some for this because it is not easy to drive in rough water. But it is my opinion after spending, you know, better part of a day in a boat, in this boat, that it's a learnable deal and this boat definitely is drivable in rough water. Guys, that seems like a good place to break part one off. We're going to do this again in three parts. So this is Tuesday. I'll have part two up Wednesday, and then we'll grade the Skeeter FXR 
on Thursday in part three. So as we watch Jesse ride off into the sunset in the FXR, man, that's a pretty boat. Uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you're enjoying this series. Thanks for all the feedback, good and bad. Hey, I know I'm not perfect, but I'm doing my best, and I'm glad you guys are along on this, uh, this great bass boat search along with me. So I'm having a good time, and I hope you're enjoying watching them. We will see you guys again tomorrow.